Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Golden Gloves Chat Show with me, two very special guests, Ricardo Magic Man Manajika, the IBA Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World, looking nice in his Golden Glove shirt, <laughs> and of course trainer Manny Fernandes. Guys, we've got a lot to chat about. I want to talk to you a lot about your life, Manny, and of course uh, what it's like to train this young man next to me. Uh, Ricardo, a big fight for you, your first defense of that IBA World title powerhouse at Empress Palace, brought to you by sport, World Sports Betting, Super Sport, your World of Champions, and of course, Golden Gloves, your promoters of champions. Marcel Braithwaite, the chosen one from Liverpool. He's had 20 fights, 16 wins, three losses, and a draw. He's a terrific fighter, 29 years old. You're just 25 years old. You're 14 and two, 16 fights. Um, but for me, your record is quite deceiving. I'm sure many will agree with me. You look at your record, 14 and 2, and I think, well, he's, he's only had 16 fights and you've already had two losses. But what a lot of people don't realize is that in your 13th fight, you fought number 9 in the, in the WBC, Adrian Lederson, and you stopped him. A lot of people didn't think you were going to win that fight. It was only your 13th fight. Then in your 14th fight, you beat uh, Kevin Muniz for the IBO Junior Bantamweight World title. So, fantastic achievements. As I say, uh, I think you're very underrated. Ricardo, uh, Marcel Braithwaite, before we talk about Braithwaite, tell us what a day in, in the life of Ricardo Malajika is the world champion. Uh, like when you wake up in the morning, like a big training day, like I know you spar Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and you train every day. But like a Tuesday, how many hours do you spend in the gym and training? Oh, lovely Uncle Brian. Uh, I'll say all my hours I'm in the gym. The gym is my home, so basically you'll find me there. <laughs> so always in the always so in the when, gym. You, when you wake up in the morning, it's obviously road work. Yeah, so basically when I wake up in the morning, I go for road work. Then I'll come back. Probably if I have a client for seven, and I could train the client for seven, and then I'm warm up. So when I train with my clients, I, I like do some warm up sessions with them, and I'm warm. And they leave. I start maybe hitting the bag or practicing some stuff in the bag. Just to see... I just interrupt you once. And that's, that's something interesting as well, which people don't realize. I don't think you're going to mention it. You train clients as well. So you're not just yes, a yes. professional world boxing champion. You, you train clients at the Brian Mitchell Boxing Academy. The guys come in the morning. The families, the, they bring the kids, the wives, the fathers, the grandfathers. Everyone. And the world champion <laughs> trains them in the morning. So can you tell us about that? So yeah, so when I'm done with them, then I just get motivated to train as well because... Going home and drink a cup of tea is not going to do anything. So I'm like, now let me, uh, like what coach will tell me, practice on this more. And then him complimenting me when he comes back. I see you getting good at that. And I tell him, yeah, I practice every day. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a nice thing, you know. Yeah, so I remember uh, you said to me the other day, a, a guy like Rob Knapp and even Sean Everett when he did the interview with you, said that they, they always see you in the gym. Yeah, and, and I liked your last interview where you said, well, the two rings are like your, your bedrooms and, yeah, the, and the bags are your, your, your friends. <laughs> so you do live in the gym. You spend a lot of time in the gym. We're going to talk to your trainer, Manny Fernandez. When you spar, how many rounds do you spar in the afternoon in a big sparring session? If I, if I have a nice, uh, if I feel very good and I'm excited for sparring, I go at 15 rounds. 14 rounds, 17, my 15 last. Rounds. Yeah, and, so that's. And you feel fine after that? Yeah, I feel perfect. You go now. More? I can go more, I can go 20. <laughs> yeah. It's just me, with all the hard work I put in, it makes me can do more rounds, so I'm excited. Okay, we'll talk to you about your fight in a second. Let me talk to your trainer, Manny. Friend. Manny, firstly, uh, uh, obviously, it, it, it's new to you training Ricardo Malajika. You came on board this year, and you guys seem to have an amazing bond. What's it like training a guy like Ricardo Malajika? Is, do you feel there's, there's pressure for you now to, to show how good he is and how good you are? Well, um, you know, the Malajikas, especially Ricardo, uh, they, they're tremendous fighters, as we know them from the amateurs yeah, sure, yeah. and what they've been producing now, uh, Ricardo especially. And, uh, you know, it's a pleasure training him. Is when you give him something and you teach him something, it's like he's, he's humble and he uh, absorbs everything you're trying to teach him. Takes it in. It takes it in. So the next time when he spars and it works, and I can tell him, I say, yo, I can see you've been doing your homework. So, you know, he gets excited. I get excited because uh, the combination or the punch that we're working on is working. So, you know, Ricard is growing every day. Mm. His growing is getting better and better all the time. So he's learned a lot from you in the, in the short time? 
Yes, uh, definitely. You know, he's he's a, he's a very good fighter. One thing about Ricardo, he's got great footwork. He's got uh, his distance is unbelievable. How he can judge the distance, and we don't want to take that away from him. So we just add in on here and there. And uh, come fight night, you'll see a different sort of Ricardo. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, he's quite underrated if you think about it. Like, like I said, his record's deceiving. I mean, because he's only had sixteen fights. He's still a baby in, in, in amount of fights. Although he's 25 years old now, that's also a baby. Um, so yeah, he is deceiving. I think it's, it's almost like Dricus uh, Duplessis said, you know, the Vietnam fight on Vietnam. They don't know what's in the gym there. Ricardo Monajica is, is becoming a monster in the gym. He, uh, as a junior, junior bantamweight, I think he's um, going to go all the way. Uh, definitely he's got the height, he's got the reach. Um, he's got the mentality to be a superstar. So it's all in the making. Yes, nice. Okay, Ricardo, Marcel Breakler, British and Commonwealth champion. He fought Sonny Edwards, who was 20 and 0, the IBF champion. I'm sure you've seen that on YouTube. Uh, and last nine points. He's a good fighter. He's going to be a bit shorter than you, but you are, you are big for the division, like, like Manny said. Have you been watching his fights, or what do you think about him? No, great fight, you know, where he is right now, with all the hard work he's also put in. I don't want to take that away from him. And yeah, I mean, come fight night, we we there to fight. So I do respect him. But what I do know definitely with the work I put in, I'm definitely winning this fight, Uncle Brian. What 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 have you got to say to you? <laughs> I mean, from, from Liverpool, I know, man, United beat Liverpool last night, I'm happy to say that. Okay. But, and we're fighting a guy from Liverpool, can, can he beat the South African? Oh, nice. This is Madeline, like I said once again, and I'm going to say it again, he's going to get blocks on this side here. This yeah, side here will be blocks on for so this, this, is, this is Africa. I love this Vietnam, Africa. Vietnam. <laughs> okay, Manny, um, your first fight with Ricardo as a world champion, you've trained many world champions, um, you're now the head coach. How long have you been in the fight game? Well, um, my old man sent me to box when I was the age of seven. I went to Jürgen Hütte, and Lars Boetis was the head coach that time. Top, top, top uh, springbok coach there. And we had like guys like uh, Pete Kraus, Basil Thomas, you know, uh, Franci, no, uh, Franci Bar not Bornos, Franci, Franz Verlun, sorry, and uh, Gideon Stratum. Great, great yeah, fighters in there. And so I learned the basics. Uh, Lars Boetis was very strict with the basics, and that's, that's where my boxing started. So you've been in the fight game more than 50 years? Yes, in, in and out basically. I played a little bit of rugby, I played club rugby, I played a little bit of Sunday league soccer and uh, I worked for Telcom and I started the very first fully multi-rational soccer side 1987 called Crown Mines United and uh, the first year we won the knockout cup so yeah. And I believe you're a bowling champion. Uh, no, no uh, not champion yet. We're sort of a good bowler, but it's getting there. Working yeah, man, on man of many trades, eh? Yes. And obviously a, a top boxing trainer. Okay, um, world champions that you've worked with. Um, we were talking off air, you've worked with about at least eight world champions. Ricardo, would you be your ninth? He's the ninth. Uh, there were two other uh, girls that I worked with that went to fight for world titles, Bakuyu and Onina. Okay. She won the world title, WBF title. She won Boxer of the Year that year. But uh, just before the fight, they left me. So, you know, the last 10 years in boxing, I was uh, given a, doing a lot of development programs and helping people to develop. But um, I sort of got the the back end of the stick on on helping these people. But um, last year I was involved in um, Mauritius, the first professional boxing tournament they did there. And I went to Zimbabwe, did coaching courses. Uh, and then Mozambique, we helped Kaiser Mabuza, former uh, IBA world champion, also the, um, start professional boxing in Mozambique. But uh, we've so been helping with development and then now I'm glad I'm back to what I do best and that's teaching fighters and working with with champions so I'm glad that Brian you and Rodney have given okay. me an opportunity exactly. to get into it and show the people what we can do I work with a number of champions Isaac Klatswai was one of them uh, Tikalani and Lovo um, uh, Kaiser Mabuza Simon Ramoni, you know, yeah, great fighters, Malcolm Claus and Oscar Chuke, yeah. Great so fun. you know what, it's it's an honor working with uh, Malinjika. You know, one thing about the Malinjikas, they've got big hearts. So come fight night, you're gonna see fireworks. Thanks, Manny, that's well said. Uh, tell us, still going back, I mean, you, when I talk of great trainers from South Africa, your name's gotta be right up there with the, the late great Nick Durant of the world. 
Tell us uh, the, the funny story. Nick Taranti and you went head to head many times. Yeah. He probably produced the most champions ever in South Africa. But when you got a chance for your, one of your champions to fight him, you kind of uh, yes. beat him a few times? You know what? Um, Nick Durant motivated me as a trainer. Uh, when we started boxing uh, in 1996 with Ron Ellis and Jeff Ellis, we started the Bronx Gym, uh, then Mayfair, in the uh, Libertas Hotel in the basement, we uh, started a boxing gym there. And, and I said to, to Jeff that time, I said, I'm going to beat this guy because Nick used to come there, well, all the, the best fighters in South Africa and used to clobber all the guys, you know, he was a top, top trainer. Yes, yes. And then uh, a couple of years back and then, say, 2000, then I uh, had Isaac Latoya and then that's when the, when the rivalry really started. Isaac fought Benedict Lamini, uh, um, Philip Mundo, Cassius Bloy, uh, Joseph Margariti, and uh, we beat them all. So, you know, that's where it started. Fantastic. Well, well then, your, I mean, your, your passion and love for uh, boxing, I, I, I can see it in the gym. What I really like about watching you in the gym with all the youngsters today is uh, your dedication to detail. It's so brilliant. Yeah, I would I would, I would stick my head out today and say you're probably one of the greatest boxing teachers this country's ever had. And there's not many guys that can really teach properly. I mean, I was a professional boxing trainer as well. And I was probably good at because I, I knew the fight game, but I wasn't a teacher. I was more on the, on the fitness side. And you're a very good teacher, so, so well done on that, Manny. Um, now you're a big task, taking this man next to you on the left-hand side of you, Ricardo, Magic Man Malajika, to the first defense of his IBO world, world title against Marcel Braithwaite from Liverpool. Talk to us, how do you see that game? Well, you know, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. That's the saying, and um, we 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 really training hard, putting in the hard work now. And I think we're going to benefit. But you sow, you reap. And I think come fight night, you know, he's getting better and better all the time. Uh, it's a couple of small mistakes that we still that he's still making muscle memory. So we're trying to work on it. So uh, we're getting we're getting there. And for you, Ricardo, like, like the coach said, we're working on it, and yeah, uh, the new me. Who, who wins and why? As a boxing question. <laughs> who wins and why? Obviously, Ricardo Malajiko wins. How do you win? By me, uh, by me making sure that I discipline the dog in Bradway. So every fighter has a dog in him that, that makes him believe in himself. So this fight night, I'm just definitely going to sort out that dog, not him, that's in him and put the dog on a leash. And so so I'll that, be the winner of the fight. You say that title's definitely not going back to Liverpool. <laughs> no way, it's uncovered. It's Africa's title, that one. It stays in Africa. Right, <laughs> it's your world title. So, <laughs> so good luck, Manny. Thank good you, luck on the, on the 5th of April. Good luck, champ. Well, thanks, thanks, Uncle Ryan. Right. Magic Man Malajika, the IBO Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World. The 5th of April, Empress Palace is the place to be. Fantastic fight, seven big fights that night, and of course, a world title fight. If you don't have tickets yet, speak to Jeff and Mari on our Golden Gloves website. you got to be there. It's going to be an unbelievable night. So good luck, guys. We'll speak again soon. And pray for us coming to get a hiding from this man next to me. Thank you for watching. Thank you.